Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving these. These are the Mahindra Thaj rear wheel drive. This is the diesel. This is the petrol. And this is the key of the vehicle. So now it gets the Twin Peaks logo of course. And you know what? This is the key of the petrol only because there is no push button start or keyless entry as such. So the thing is that there are buttons here on one of the keys and the other key actually has dummy buttons. Yeah, check that cost cutting out, will you? Anyways, so what you can do with this car is you can lock it by pressing this button there. It locks it, makes this sound as well. And then I can unlock it. If I press this button again, then the light also turns on. Yeah, pressing this button again turns on the light and there's this sounding system so that you know where the car is. And obviously, it's a flip key as well. Anyways, straight away, we are going to be opening the engine bay of the diesel. Firstly, I did not plant this, but the thar tends to go anywhere whenever it feels like. Let's just open this. And okay, it's going to be a bit heavy. Will I be able to manage? Okay, I think it's shut from inside. So let's open it. Okay, there it is. So you don't have to press any lever. This is the new diesel engine. There is no insulation there, which is quite surprising. Motor is quite loud here. Yeah, it's very loud. And I don't know why there's this plastic sheet lying right inside. Let's just shut it. Okay, the washer fluid goes right there. So it's not very ergonomically placed. Now let's open it in the petrol. Easy peasy. These clips are kind of cool. Again, retro bits on this car. And I have to lift this. There it is. The same engine which powers the regular thar. The 1.5 liter is in that one. This is the 2. Point, sorry, 2.0 liter. The M Stallion motor. And there it gives you some instruction of how to wash the engine bay. No hydraulic struts, no gas struts. So let's just shut this. The thing is, you cannot even differentiate if this is the rear wheel drive or the four wheel drive because the trim levels are the same. Everything is the same in terms of design and aesthetic. You can see halogen lights. This is the DRL halogen indicator, of course. And you know what? They've changed the color of the bumper. So when the Thar was initially launched, it had something or had some features which have been dropped over time, which is kind of disappointing. Thar is written almost everywhere so that you don't mistake it for a Jeep Wrangler. That's the reason it says Thar right there. Now, the reason for the 1.5 litre diesel engine is, you can see it's a 4 meter in length. That will reduce the price of the car because of excise duty benefits. And you've got 18 inch tyres, which is quite nice. 265, 65, 18s. There is the new Mahindra Twin Peaks logo, which has been added. This is what a reflector indicator. I don't know. I don't care. Says are here. And these hinges are very retro cool, which has been placed almost everywhere. You see the side body cladding actually joins the side footstep. No rear disc brakes, which is a bummer, and that actually shows in the braking performance of this car, which could be a lot better. Coming to the rear, again, nice spare wheel. I mean, the spare tire is placed on the tailgate, which is quite cool. It looks quite nice as well, and I like the fact that the tire name and the variant of the tire is actually finished in sort of bluish color. Obviously, it gets a full-size spare wheel with an alloy with the logo pointing in the right direction. It also says Thar on the alloy wheels, which is quite cool. This being the petrol automatic, says automatic here. And uh, you've got rear parking sensors, but no reverse parking camera, which is a bit of a bummer. In fact, when you unlock the car, okay, we'll do that here. So let me just lock it. There it locks. When I unlock it, it actually blinks thrice. Okay, I don't know the logic of this, but most Mahindra cars do this, which is kind of cool. And it says Thar here. Okay, it does not say petrol diesel anywhere obviously it will say that there so people don't feel diesel traditionally these cars are supposed to be diesels of course i mean such off-roaders now if you notice one thing very clearly that the antenna is actually placed here but doesn't say anything here it should say now m falcon 117 no it does not say that so the m hawk 130 badging has been removed from the diesel they have done it so that people don't think this is a lesser powerful car but in the petrol, it still says M Stallion 150 TGDI. There it's written. Okay, there is this antenna. It looks quite nice in red color. I especially like it. And the rear wheel drive is only available with either a diesel manual or a petrol automatic with hard top. There is no soft top option available at all. This way, people who want any of those options will have to upgrade to the four wheel drive version of the tire. And here, let's get inside. So it's one second. I thought it's going to be much easier. Okay, this seems to be jammed. Yeah, new car's thing is jammed. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah, now it's moving better. Let me get inside. Firstly, space is decent for two people. You can see one of the seats is actually reclined. Yeah, this one is reclined quite a lot. And there is decent amount of space. 
but under thigh support is very poor you can see where my thighs are let me put this back into place yeah right now this is all the way ahead so leg room isn't an issue but you know actually it's the wheel wells which protrude inside that is a bit of a problem they should have a center armrest no not a center but a side armrest which is obviously an accessory but that is very much needed mahindra also is offering that as an option window area is large enough nice handle to hold on to you get a roll cage speaker placement here on the top and uh, yeah that is actually the toolkit because there's no space in the boot but yeah it's decently spacious seats are quite comfortable get these isofix child seat mounts as well you get magazine holder scooped out seat back so that's kind of nice let me just get out from here yeah, this is all the way ahead so getting in and out is not the easiest that's the reason many of us are actually waiting for the five door thar including me they see this dummy here because on the other side it is actually the control to adjust the outside view of your mirrors probably they have it because they thought they'll sell this in left hand drive countries which they were not able to ip54 rating for the interior so you can just hose it down drizzle proof and all that but very slippery and this plaque is right here which says made in india with pride the mahindra thar with the serial number in fact some easter eggs here with two camels and the glove box is lockable but very small still very chin to glove box there's a handle to hold on to so i'm doing a quick revision of the thar with you guys and there's some information here as well thing is that you have to actually use the key of the vehicle to access the fuel lid which is disappointing yeah come on this should have opened from inside it says petrol there so you don't feel diesel of course so that's a bit finicky right there let's open the boot which means tailgate rather firstly this opens sideways and you see there's some leaf graphic there nice easter egg and then this goes upwards no rear wiper but it gets rear defogger so the specs and trims and features are the same as the four wheel drive model this is reclined a bit so here i can make it upright i can just recline the seat like this to increase the boot carrying capacity but this is actually fixed so it doesn't go sideways but you can actually remove it you can remove the roof you can remove the doors you can remove almost everything you want from this car just to increase the coolness factor so first let me shut this yeah and then we want to shut this and actually lock it from here as well so in case someone is sitting but no no jump seat so that doesn't really matter okay there is a reflector here facet can swing up through this always hunting or rather are always hunting for the exhaust which is hidden right there there is a towing hook there good amount of ground clearance 226 mm and a good water weighting capacity of 650 mm let's get inside Okay, door pockets are big enough. These are the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment. Says thar here. They put thar badging almost everywhere. Speaker placement right there. In fact, there is a picture of a Willys which is broken down, I believe. Now these are actually revised. So these are actually the controls to operate the multi information display. This is the stop start system which has been added, and some buttons from here have been picked and thrown there. Headlight leveler. This is illuminated the key ring. Let's actually turn on the car, and as soon as we do that, music system is going to turn on. Here we go. no clutch lock none of that says mahindra rise right there and shows this thar desert type graphics as where seat belt 2 gives a warning and then i think the audio system will turn on yeah no okay yes whatever anyways let's shut those kind of soft they don't feel that rugged this thing actually comes out but then where will you store it there's a light placement here on the top let's listen to an audio right away Audio quality is decent. It's not bad. This is a seven-inch screen, which isn't very big as such. Nice carbon fiber type material. These are a bit finicky to operate, and these are controls for the air conditioning. Now there are aircraft style toggle switches here. So this is for the airbag. It tells you on or off depending if someone is seated there. This is the seat belt warning. So these buttons do not get pressed. This is the hazard light. This is for traction control. This is for downhill assist. So it has got hill descent control and uh, you know hill hold control as well. This is to lock the door. The dedicated button there. Nice treatment here with the mat. Okay, there's a aux plug here, a USB, and one USB has been removed. But they should have added a USB C at least. That's the reason I had to actually add this charger to the 12 volt socket because I use a USB C. Now the gear lever has actually gone. The four wheel drive selector has gone. So there's some storage space. here which is deep enough so finally you can keep a phone there otherwise you can keep it here phones don't fit here so this is actually having this chrome line and twin cup holders coin holder these are controls for the power windows this is the handbrake of the vehicle and this is the gas selector so everything is the same as before steering wheel gets a new logo cruise control buttons audio control buttons and the steering wheel is actually adjustable but yeah only for height that's it so here are controls for the wipers oh my god look at the spray plenty of it and then these are controls for the lights and you can see the instrument cluster has this 
check tire direction and tells you where the wheels are pointing. It's a little basic the cluster in terms of the way the tachometer and the speedometer has been done. But you can actually browse through this because there's so much information on offer. So it's telling you warning history. You can get into settings. Trip meters are there, which obviously are two of those with a lot more information as such. And then it's telling me the fuel efficiency, which is 7.3 kilometers per liter with my driving style, of course. That is a speedometer. And yeah, you can browse through this and then you can obviously go up and down in various menus as well. It's a bit slow to respond. So it could be a little quicker as well. So there you see distance to empty. Yeah. So the problem is that the placement of this is very strong. Stupid is the word I can use or not? Because come on, why would you place it here? You could have placed it on the steering wheel. The horn, the horn is actually nice. Uh, there is this sun visor there with a strap. On the other side, we have another sun visor with a mirror, and this is not auto dimming. You have to manually dim it, of course. Now this screen is decent. First and foremost. There are plenty of things like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Connectivity. In fact, I can browse through this and, you know, sometimes it doesn't really work. There's a tire pressure monitor here and various things like adventure statistics, which gives me a lot of information, like how much power and torque I'm using. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. And it's also having a compass and a G monitor. Then there's something for rough road. Again, it's telling me the incline angle of the vehicle and all. So that's another cool feature which is there in this car. I quite like it. The thar is the same as before, nothing has changed. But how does it drive? First, let's start with the petrol and then we'll jump into the diesel because diesel has significant changes. A freaking new engine. Look at that engine in that car. Smiling, huh? All right, we're all set to go, which means first and foremost, let's turn off the air conditioning and we will actually get into the adventure statistics for on-road. I get into drive mode, handbrake down. I will turn off traction control as well. Left foot on the brake. Okay, start stop system also off because it's very intervening. And I also need to change this. So here we are going to change it to the steering direction or not that you're going to be able to see anything. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, hazard lights off. Listen to this, okay? Yeah, that is the fun of rear wheel drive. But you know, with the four wheel drive also, you can actually do the exact same thing of spinning the rear wheels because you are default in two wheel drive mode only. Now, what have they changed? They've actually removed the four by four badging, which is there on the right rear of the car that has been removed. But the difference here is that this is a petrol engine, which is now lighter. The car is lighter, actually. The engine is the same weight. So this is the M Stallion 150, which means it makes 150 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque. This car actually reminds me of the Jeep Wrangler, which I drove almost eight, nine years back because that was also powered by a petrol engine. But that was the V6. And with this non aerodynamic body, it used to fly, it used to defy physics. This one too does because this is the fastest car you can get in the country right now. Because with the weight reduction of almost 140 kgs, because now it's rear wheel drive and the whole four wheel drive transmission and the added weight is gone this car is much faster now not much okay it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under 10 seconds the earlier petrol automatic or rather the 4x4 petrol automatic the earlier is the wrong word because it's not gone or rather earlier is the right word because whatever that actually goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 10.15 seconds so this has become slightly quicker and it, you can feel the reduced weight of the car kind of feels slightly more punchy slightly more eager and the body roll seems to have reduced slightly okay very slightly you can't really make that up much but get into the throttle the response is immediate it doesn't have a high red line because it actually upshifts under 5000 rpm which is quite quick around the corners you can feel there's so much body roll this crazy amount of body roll so the thar obviously being a body on frame vehicle has considerable amount of body roll the engine is smooth and refined gets vocal in the top end the gearbox is not the fastest shifting it's the same automatic gearbox which also does duty on the diesel but with rear wheel drive you only get a petrol automatic and a diesel manual and then the ride seems busy all the time the diesel ride is slightly better because like the stiffness is there so that bouncy effect and the vertical movement is slightly less but still this isn't a car which is uh, not making its body on frame platforms lumpiness obvious yeah this is a car which actually makes it obvious whatever i'm saying but yeah you can feel that continuous movement all the time acceleration is really brisk but this comes at the cost of fuel efficiency this one will reduce uh, return around seven to eight kilometers per liter which is not that great uh, but efficiency is improved by around half a kilometers per liter because of the reduced weight of the car so i would have loved paddle shifters but this car really pulls only thing is at high speeds now you can feel a lot of the wind noise especially on the aa pillar because it's not a very aerodynamic car so that's something which you have to deal with otherwise unless and under you're in the ncr region the diesel is still the one to buy and when i say diesel i honestly feel even the 1.5 diesel is better than this 2 liter petrol although this 2 liter petrol is producing a lot more power yeah 
almost 33 more horsepower which is considerable 20 newton meters more torque here we are going to come to halt you can see brakes are not that sure footed the manual has better braking of course and here now i'm going to launch it in auto or rather not auto manual mode here revving the motor red line comes in at five and a half thousand rpm it holds on to a gear and then i upshift it takes three years for the upshift look at this okay now it's reached five and a half now i've shift now it shifts so it takes a lot of time so gearbox could be a lot faster but then this car is not about spirited driving it's about uh, driving it calmly smoothness is there honestly diesel makes way more sense than the petrol unless and until you're in the ncr region and that manual mode only works in first two gears after that now this car will upshift from third gear onwards now uh, this is a six speed ascent source gearbox yeah this uh, automatic one which is quite nice in fact the diesel automatic is the most popular variant having the highest waiting period you can see the vertical movement when you are at speed over this expansion joint so yeah the ride uh, is uh, not the best when you speed up but it's not the best at slow speeds either because yeah the lumpiness is felt the ride is better in medium speeds and when you're not pushing it hard and then obviously it has this indestructible air around it i don't like the pedal placement honestly i feel there could be a lot more space on the left side which unfortunately is not the case so yeah this uh, bit of a uh, issue with my knee hitting the center console there is the diesel in fact here let's go into it so now i'm driving the diesel and this is a 1.5 liter unit which comes from the marazzo it's from the m falcon series of engines the m falcon is the same series which was also used in the KUV 100 which actually has okay there the petrol is flying which actually has a 1.2 liter three cylinder engine for the KUV obviously the diesel now this one actually powers the marazzo with 123 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque they have reduced the power here to 117 because then the gap between the 2.2 and the 1.5 would just be 7 horsepower which would be very less so that's the reason they have actually detuned this car intentionally so this one is producing 117 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque so 20 newton meters less than the petrol and exact same torque output as the diesel 2.2 which is kind of crazy in fact 55 percent of that torque comes in at 1000 rpm they also have a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine which uh, again diesel which powers the bolero so mahindra is having a lot of engines now this is actually known as the m falcon there but here they want to call it the d117 crde yeah because they don't want people to know this this is a smaller capacity engine but honestly it doesn't feel so smaller capacity in any way it punches way above its weight it actually feels like the 2.2 and you don't realize you're driving a car with a smaller capacity engine such as the performance which kind of blows your mind honestly i never expected it to be so good so there is some turbo lag of course which for me is the silence before the storm after that it pulls nice and strong and the mid-range is nice but top end is completely lacking here uh, you can feel the movement obviously there is that vertical movement which is associated with a body on frame platform car the view around is amazing the windshield is super wide and uh, the car obviously has a very wide track so that's the reason why you kind of feel that uh, you're driving a very wide car although it's small that's the reason why i feel that there should be a reverse park camera how much will a reverse parking camera cost 5000 10000 rupees you're paying 15 16 lakhs for this car why don't you get a reverse parking camera standard come on mahindra you can do better in that regard now this engine will be more efficient when compared to the 2.2 diesel because because it's smaller capacity this car obviously weighs 150 kgs less when compared to the bigger engine model because that's four-wheel drive plus 1.5 liter engine is obviously lesser in terms of weight get on the thought the response is good and there's good amount of performance the marazzo also has an eco mode there are no drive modes here and the gearbox is decently slick shifting but it's not the slickest in terms of shifts the clutch has a springy action as well so they are not getting the automatic here which is a smart move because that's the way they're going to make a lot of money because who wants the convenience of an automatic has to opt for the bigger 2.2 liter engine with four wheel drive even if they don't really need it so as i see it even downsizing here has made no effect because the performance is as good as ever that deficit of 13 horsepower is quite made up or covered by the lighter weight of the engine as well as the two wheel drive configuration of this car and the petrol keeps flying all the time obviously the performance on the petrol is just so much better steering kind of feels loose in the center position but high speed manners are good only thing is beyond 100 kilometers per hour there's a lot of wind noise which comes and there's no convertible option here there's just hard top which is better in terms of resisting the wind otherwise in the soft top convertible oh my god you cross 60 70 kilometers per hour it starts flapping and at 80 90 kilometers per hour it flaps like mad that you will automatically reduce the speed i think a 1.5 liter engine is more than enough in fact i gave mahindra this bright idea in the first video i made of the new thar in 2020 by saying that they should plong the 1.5 liter engine because when they do that they 
classify the car as a small car thereby getting excise duty benefits as well and uh, that obviously means that the car will be around two to three lakhs cheaper because of all these benefits okay there is the statue of liberty now thing is that i wish the gearbox was better you know what i'm talking about the gearbox i'll show it to you right away by the way uh, the brakes are better on the manual but braking could be a lot better because initial bite is lacking and then obviously there's nose dive under heavy braking you can see that yeah but then you can do engine braking in the manual which is quite nice and here hazard lights on now listen to the gearbox okay here okay i'm going to operate the gearbox you can hear the sound it's not the smoothest it's just not smooth enough this gearbox so how potent is this diesel engine i'll show you first and foremost i want to turn off the stop start system it's very intervening traction control off into first gear hazard lights off revving the motor listen to this okay rest to 3000 rpm no 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 wheel spin a oh, little bit of it kind of surprising because obviously the tires are so wide and gearing is also on the shorter side in fact i think i might have to shift to four to reach 100 kilometers per hour so this should go from zero to 100 kilometers per hour around 12 and a half okay look at that car i'm on full throttle that one just flies the engine is very refined lower down especially when you're at idle super refined smooth or smooth but it gets vocal around 3000 rpm and the thing is it redlines slightly under 5000 rpm but you know what there is nothing in the top end so it's pointless to take it in the higher end of the rev range because it just lacks performance there around the corners you can feel the roly poly happening all over the place the thing is that uh, the marazo is front wheel drive this is rear wheel drive so a little bit difference in the way they put their power down and uh, yeah it actually crashes through big bumps because of the big tires it has so that's a, a, something which you have to get used to otherwise you can feel a bit nauseous in this car if you're not used to a body on frame platform it's not just this car any body on frame platform car will have that now this is a hydraulic steering which is loose in the center position overall it's light and taking a u-turn is very easy because obviously it's a very chiddu car in terms of length it's not much so there you don't have any problem here first gear red line oh my god you can hear how vocal this engine gets it becomes quite vocal the waiting period of the thar is quite a lot so why are they launching a rear wheel drive version they already have so many cars to deliver actually the petrols you can get quite fast the diesels have waiting period especially the automatic can go up to four months which is quite a lot and then just check this out okay i'm going to take a u-turn so it's steering is very light and easy and then the good thing is that okay it's making this sound that door is open which is not there it doesn't center immediately but uh, yeah the steering is better than what i've seen in maruti cars for sure red line is at four and a half thousand rpm so it doesn't really like to uh, like push in the top end honestly nothing is there up past three and a half thousand rpm the petrol engine is not really better in that regard because it also doesn't like the red line so mahindra still gives preference to performance over efficiency and this one will be more efficient when compared to the 2.2 diesel because smaller capacity engine lighter in terms of weight so i think it's a win-win situation by getting the rear wheel drive thar does it make sense well a lot of people buy this car just for the style and just to maybe go to the gym or the likes they never go off-road so that's the reason why mahindra is launching it because even when you go for rental cars now supposing in goa there are a lot of thars which are available for rent which don't go off-road ever so you're lugging extra weight for no reason paying a lot more money for no reason so this is definitely going to boost the sales of this car and now mahindra wants to target buyers of the venue the nexon and all those compact suvs as well with this car with a more attractive price point they are going to get excise duty benefits they're going to get benefits by removing the four wheel drive system so excise duty benefit should be almost a lakh and removing the four wheel drive system should give them a benefit of almost uh, one and a half lakh rupees so quite a lot of money saved there with the diesel being a smaller capacity less cost goes into making that engine so obviously the uh, benefit will be slightly higher so i believe now that uh, the pricing will be what it was at the time of launch because they have increased the prices over the years why did they actually put this marazo engine here well they made a lot of engines for the marazo the marazo did not sell marazo is selling about 200 units a month so all those engines lying down lying out vacant they took it and they plonked it in the thar and here we have the thar rear wheel drive honestly the engine is so good now that i don't know why they did not launch with this engine from day one because they say there's no replacement for displacement but honestly you don't feel that you want more displacement here because this engine gets the job done primarily because the thar is not a car you would like to push hard because once you do that there's a lot of wind noise everywhere around the wheel arches around the a pillar everywhere you can hear a lot of the wind and you just enjoy this car by driving it at a slower pace and that's where it honestly shines more there's no point pushing it hard and fast it's just kind of pointless to you know ring open the throttle because that's not where this car shines this car shines in just being driven slowly where people stare at you and the thar still in spite of 80000 units being on the road attracts a lot of attention which is quite 
not expected i thought the royalty or the novelty would wear off soon enough but it hasn't people still love the thar so much it's a car which honestly i would buy if i was looking to buy a compact suv because it just has so much more character and style and attitude traction control off hazard lights off revving the motor and off we go Surprise surprise no wheel spin i expected to do a lot of wheel spin so if you are looking to do wheel spin if you're looking to drift then you should definitely get the 2.2 liter engine model by the way this car has got four star rating for both adult and child protection from global nca which is quite good and yeah it feels robust so mahindra has actually made a car with a lot of character safety performance fun and what not the only thing is that uh, it's getting pricey in fact the top variant costs almost 20 lakhs for the diesel automatic which is actually the most popular variant no Nobody actually opted for the AX. Everybody wanted the LX only. So the rear wheel drive will actually sit in where the AX was supposed to sit, and then boost the sales of the Thar even more. The range actually starts at 17 lakhs for the petrol manual, goes to 18 lakhs for the diesel manual. For 19 lakhs, you get the petrol automatic, and that one is also a petrol automatic. So that one, the the one rear wheel drive one, which you can see in the mirror. I don't know if it's seen or not, but that one will cost around 16 and a half lakh rupees. So yes, the Thar range will really widen up. Now this one gets brake locking differential, MLD, rather mechanical. locking differential has been removed what is what is it exactly it connects the rear wheels to give it equal power so to make in order to make it better off the road so mahindra has actually removed it and now it's optional on the diesel variant so you can pay a bit more to opt for it mm, greedy mahindra and the thing is that uh, it's not offered as an option on the petrol because mahindra believes only people who buy diesel engine cars are going to go off road petrol guys are just going to do show off <laughs> well probably that might be the case but that doesn't matter what matters is that mahindra has really taken this concept of the thar and put it very ahead by doing something kind of unique by offering rear wheel drive in a car which screams 4x4 and the reason to do it is of course the maruti jimny fidor which is going to be launched as soon as tomorrow or day after or whatever but that's not the point the point is that the gurkha is also coming with a fidor version mahindra's uh, fidor version of the thar is still a few months away probably it will come next year and on that anticipation is time to end thank you so much for watching if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel it's time for me to see the need the need for speed bye bye